Hello? Who's there? Hello? Who are you? Oh, you don't know? Well, it's easy to get lost in the midst of Ravenloft. It'd be a lot safer knowing what kind of character you're going to play. Are you from Barovia? Lamordia? The Carnival? Ma, you're lucky to have found me. Come, let's help you find out how you fit into this ghost story. And what kind of dark gifts you may contain. Hello, Acolytes! Welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons & Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. Deep in the Plain of Shadows lies a world of mists hiding domains born of wickedness. These nightmare demiplanes are called the Domains of Dread, that together form the setting of Ravenloft. Outlined in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, a book that allows you to play in these haunted landscapes. So the question remains, who are you? Why are you here? What domain of dread may you be from, or how do you fit into the story itself? DMs can ask these same questions for their NPCs. We will answer all of these questions going over 50 character concepts from all the listed domains to inspire you for your Ravenloft game or something else similarly spooky. If you want a copy of the book, you can find it through a link in the description, but let's hit some major features of Ravenloft and get into it. The first thing that you will encounter in nearing these domains is something called the mists. They act as a veil between these worlds, transporting adventurers from one to another and serving something called the Dark Powers. Shadows and screams often escape these mists as they swirl. Upon entering these domains of dread, you will find that each world has an entity that governs it called a Dark Lord. This Dark Lord can take many shapes, but in most cases, the Dark Powers grant them limited ability to manipulate the mists and either shut people out or invite them in. Accessing these domains are difficult, and you can easily become prisoner to a domain of dread you enter, but you can traverse the mist to another domain more easily if you know what talismans to bring. It could be as simple as a rat's tail or a spearhead or a love letter, which act as a tuning fork or lodestone to the right one, or having certain dark gifts, which we will be going over later in the video. But this brings us to our first character concept, the Horizon Walker Ranger, with a gothic aesthetic that holds these talismans and helps those gain passes to a domain of their choosing. Work with your DM to know if you have any of these talismans from your domain of origin. Ezra is the god of mists, so another way to traverse it, it would be playing a death domain cleric of Ezra. Some say that she's a manifestation of these dark powers, others say it's the Raven Queen but that's up to you. But speaking of ravens though, some of the other creatures that have found it easy to traverse between the planes are called the keepers of the feathers. Basically wear ravens that act as the mail service between the domains as well as the afterlife. A lore bard would be a perfect fit here. Which also brings us to the Vistani, a race of nomadic humanoids that don't call any one domain home, but deal in caravans and trade goods between them. The mists are their home and they travel it confidently. Great for a Gloomstalker Ranger or a Scout Rogue character. You can be a Hexblade Warlock of the Priests of Osibis, Cultists of the Dark Powers, or a Way of Shadow Monk from the Order of the Guardians, monastic caretakers that work to prevent evil anomalies. There are some other organizations, but those are good to start with. Let's now get into the meat of the Domains of Dread, going through them in alphabetical order. There's a lot, so the synopsis will be introductory. Most everyone knows, if you've been playing D&D for a while, the first domain on the list, Barovia. The domain of the first vampire. Made famous by the adventurer Curse of Strahd, where Count Strahd von Zarevich stands as the vampiric Dark Lord. A land of perpetual darkness and gloom afflicts the land with paranoia and superstition, aided by the cycle of obsession and despair. Lean into those superstitions as a divination wizard, with a crystal ball or tarot cards as you look to face Strahd yourself, possibly as a keeper of the feather, as they have originated here, actually. Or play with vampirism with the way of the long death monk or an un dead warlock. Or my College of the Sanguine Bard, a true vampire subclass in this channel's October magazine that I will touch on later in the video. Going on, Blutspur is the domain of alien memories, a place that takes inspiration from the far realm with dreamlike geometry and gravity-defying mountains. A city laboratory beneath the ground holds mind flayers who work tirelessly to prevent inevitable death of their god brain, the dark lord of this domain. Abductions and memory wipes happen consistently, though many have actually regained long-lost memory here. 
Only those with psionic capabilities can traverse the walls of the Undercity. So be a Cyanite fighter spy trying to recover a person of interest or recover lost memories. Or be an aberrant mind sorcerer, person of interest, mutated by terrifying experimentations. Now, apathy and cruelty is abundant in Borka, the domain of desire and deceit. No one else matters while in the pursuit of power, thrill, and untarnished emotion. The lower class are merely exploitable tools in this endeavor, but in return, look to the nobles as celebrities. Politics, businesses, seductions, embarrassments, and social warfare are everywhere. Familial betrayal is what created this dark domain with the dual dark lords, Ivan Delisnia and Ivana Boritsi. Be among their noble houses or a noble yourself as an eloquence bard, or with their expertise in poisons and contraptions respectively, strive as an apprentice for an alchemist or battlemaster artificer, or work for the other nobles tempting the locals into debt, blackmail, and ruin as an enchantment wizard. Those who don't bend to the whims of the rulers suffer a fate worse than death, embarrassment. The Carnival is a wandering domain of wonders. It's the only traveling domain of dread that I know of, but of course you can always make your own. Not to be confused with the witch-like Carnival of the Feywild, though they do have an interesting past with each other that you could implement into your story. But this is a fair of freaks and features people like a man with no reflection, a wear hair, and a juggler with flammable blood. The Dark Lord here isn't beholden to most of the rules of other Ravenloft Lords, but could be either Isolde or her sword, Nepenthe. Either way, she is perceived as a guardian angel of sorts to the Carnival's inhabitants. Perhaps you are in the cast of the Carnival as a beast man or beast barbarian, struggling with the fact that you are little more than a spectacle. Or join the Carnival as a Kensei monk or a swords bard juggling blades a person escaping from their parents that have high expectations. Now, Darkon is a domain without a Dark Lord, a domain on the brink of destruction. The Lich that once ruled here removed himself from duty with powerful magic, causing an event that shook the entire domain and vanished in what they call the Hour of Ascension. This arguably caused the slow annihilation and the crumbling of this domain, Mist called the Shroud, claiming parts of it to disappear forever. Corpses rise as undead overnight, though still some of the inhabitants ignore the inevitable demise of the area, regarding it as heresy. Other tyrants vie to replace the missing lich and claim to be the only one that can restore the domain to what it once was. Be an evocation wizard vying for that chance to be a dark lord, or possibly a shadow sorcerer who was caught up in the original Hour of Ascension and learned to channel the Shroud. Demenliu is a city of facade, the domain of decadent illusion. Illusions of grandeur hide the truth of wealth the citizens try to fake. Everyone has something to hide, and the low class fake being in the middle class, and the middle class fake being in the high class. They are in constant fear of being unmasked, and often results in the Dark Lord Cedra Deonaire disintegrating you, but at the masquerade ball. Being the Dark Lord of the Domain of Facades, who knows what she's hiding? The theme of mass is prevalent both physically and socially, hiding oneself even if people already know who you are. As a character from this domain, you may always be striving to appear more than you are, especially financially. Tap into illusion magic with your illusionist wizard to continue the deception, or act as the royalty that you want to be as a glamour bard. Another domain doomed to destruction is Volkovnia, the domain besieged by the dead. A domain under martial law where the military has forced its denizens into manual labor to construct fortifications under the threat of lashes or death with little food to fuel them, all to protect them from a monthly rise of a legion of zombies that has left all but one city in ruin. After the horde is defeated, the dead are burned, fortifications rebuilt, and the process is repeated. The Dark Lord Vladeska Drakov is the leader of this military force, denying her failures through her overconfidence. You could be a member of this military as an Oath of Vengeance paladin, vowing to rid this domain of undead once and for all. Or you could be a light domain cleric having escaped the ruling fist of this military and help protect a band of deserters from the continuous hordes of undead. Harakir, the domain of the ancient dead, is a land of time buried in the sand. Forgotten tombs and ruined pyramids suggest stories of the fallen pharaohs remembered only in script and song. Ruled by Ankhtepat, speaker for the gods and an immortal pharaoh, he has only one goal 
to find one missing piece of his fractured soul. An antagonist not unlike the movie The Mummy. His children mummies wear heads depicting false gods that the pharaoh has created, apportion food and blessings to the worthy, and punish blasphemers. You can originate from this desert as a celestial warlock of one of these false gods, or possibly gain your power from having the pharaoh's lost soul inside you all along like a horcrux. Or be really good at traversing this desert with a Beastmaster Ranger summoning scorpions and crocodiles. In Hasland, the domain doomed by magic, it's more of a gigantic library more than any other destination. The Dark Lord Haslick regards all its denizens as either experiments and apprentices as they conduct magical experiments that tear the fabric of reality and often result in wild disasters. Ambitions of the magic elite drain this land of vitality but is ignored in celebration to new magical feats and creations of monstrous creatures. With sapient fungi, crashing meteors, and forests made of stone, there is plenty to experiment on here. The rest of the domain is populated by hunters, miners, and artisans, many seeking magical skill to even catch the eye of the Dark Lord here. Maybe you are an artillerist artificer that experiments with the mind crystals here. It would also be an easy fit for a transmutation wizard apprentice of the all-seeing Haslick, or one of the unlucky denizens experimented on resulting in a wild magic barbarian. Going on to the domain trapped within a dream, Ekoth is a domain where people enter into an alternate version of their city when they fall asleep. To some, they do not know which reality is the real one. This dream world created by their dark lord, Xian Cheng, features streets paved with gold and citizens here labor tirelessly to create the perfect city. Always going back, rebuilding older architecture and design over and over and over again. Where in reality, it's a normal city, eerily empty with the forever sleeping and moldy homes. Undead spirit thralls actually pick up and move sleeping bodies out of the way to reshape the real city streets to match the perfectionist world Tien has created. So what if you were a Circle of Dreams druid that somehow escaped the clutches of the perfect dream? Or a phantom rogue that fights off the desires for sleep and channels the dead spirits, scavenging the waking world for food to survive. Or who knows, maybe I got those two worlds backwards. Now in the deceptively beautiful landscape, the kingdom of Kalakari stands as a place plagued with the war of a dying queen's curse, the domain of betrayal and revenge. Sibling rivalry is taken to the extreme in a political betrayal within the family. Siblings Arihani and Riva killed their sister Ramya after she was crowned queen, plunging their kingdom into the mists of Ravenloft. The queen, however, is then revived as the dark lord of the domain and cursed her siblings with fiendish forms with animal features. But with none of them seemingly having the ability to die, it is a harsh game of thrones as they all vie for the Sapphire Throne, each sibling having their own faction of dedicated supporters who actively seek out and kill the faction members of their other siblings. Ramya herself leading an army of undead of humanoids and beasts alike who were in the service of her before the betrayal. Take your pick of siblings as you might play an Oath of Crown Paladin dedicated to the cause of one, or possibly a fiend warlock of any of them as your patron, whether you supported Arihani or Riva, or were cursed by Ramya herself. In Kardakas, the domain of tarnished dreams, the world is quite literally your stage. Performers and actors pursue their dreams with the weirdly threatening rule, never let your audience grow bored. Even the plants seem to prove their greatness by bigger blooms and exaggerated deaths in winter. Songbirds sing till they're hoarse. Fame and fortune are promised to everyone who is considered worthy. But triumph is just as common as despair, and the passions of the heart have birthed lycanthropes out for dominion and blood. Harkin Lucas stands as the Domain's Dark Lord, his background in stage lights himself, but with his own dark secrets. Creation bards may flourish here, where instead of singing the Song of Creation, they sing a sourceless song mistakenly carried in the wind by a nearby Wildersung Wood. Or of course, the Order of the Lycan Bloodhunter, if your DM allows the Matt Mercer class at your table. Now, Lamordia is the domain of snow and stitched flesh. Esteemed scholars see life here as just a mix of chemicals and populate the realm with golems and humunculi. Starvation, powerful radiation, and chilling blizzards force the denizens' hands in desperate innovations. Pushing beyond morality, these scientific pursuits require the most valuable resource, human flesh. The apathy of Dark Lord Dr. Victor Mordenheim has helped her achieve the impossible. Just make sure that you haven't signed your flesh rights away. 
Sleeping mountains, radiation warped beasts, and coal factories also populate this domain. Both a necromancer and battle master artificer with similar morality might find their ambitions satiated here. A circle of the land arctic druid would find it easier to diverse this landscape or be one of the undead with a path of the undead barbarian where you can choose either ghost form or zombie form and get features that reflect each archetypes, even being able to switch between them. This is another subclass in this month's issue of my monthly magazine that I mentioned before. Coupled with the College of Sanguine Bard, you will have the perfect start to an undead adventure. In the magazine, you can also find flavor tips to build other unique undead characters, unique encounters for dozens of different kinds of zombies, and an exploration of vampires from around the world. Free for all my patron members if you want to support me directly, or you can find it all on my website, I'll link below. But moving on to Mordent, the domain of the haunted, the undead barbarian would also work here. The dead here know no resting place or afterlife. No peace among the wailing banshees and clinking chains, but being a land of tradition or being stuck in their ways, the aristocrats and community here do things as they have always been done. So literally the past cannot be discarded or forgotten in any sense. The dead helping enforce the rules that have always been. Whenever someone does die, they join the ever-growing community of spirits that live in tentative harmony with the living. Your weird uncle coming to every Thanksgiving even after they're dead. The Dark Lord Wilfred Godefroy, a spirit himself, both haunts and is haunted by his own domain. Embrace the ancestral spiritualism with an ancestral guardian barbarian, or fight alongside a dead ancestor with an Echo Knight fighter or astral self monk if you decide you are from this domain. Rick Mulo is a domain of disease, isolation, and were rats, an otherwise normal looking city that is plunged into chaos with a single cough. Taking inspiration from the Black Death of world history, all at once, the gnawing plague washes over the land along with hordes of rats. Much like how we handled COVID, the people board up their homes and don't dare venture outside, never knowing just how long they will need to stay inside to be safe. No vaccination technology then, though. Jacqueline Rainier stands as the dark lord of this domain, desperate to keep it from falling into ruin or collapse. Ward off the plague with a mercy monk sporting a plague mask or a grave domain cleric or embrace the plague and the rats with a swarm keeper ranger or a lichen blood hunter, but this time a were rat instead of a werewolf. Next we have Tepest, the domain of nature's cruel secrets. Mother Lorinda, the domain's dark lord, stands as a fey protector of the area's last remaining villages. Every solstice and equinox, there is a tithe and festival to ward off the other dark fey that lurks in the corners of the forest surrounding them. But even the watchful eye of the mother can miss her children sometimes wandering off and a cruel fey bargain struck. Sacrifice your left eye and be one of the mother's minds as a fey warlock, or strike that bargain with other fey royalty living in the woods and be a fey wanderer ranger. I can't help but think of the movie The Village with this one, so watch it for some great inspiration. In Valakan, we have the Domain of the Hunter, one of my favorites. The hunter in question is the Dark Lord Shakuna, where if she grows bored of animal prey, more intelligent quarries may be on the table. Quicksand, were panthers, and other jungle dangers dot the land that make escaping alive virtually impossible. Either outsmart the predator or become one yourself. Be a hunter ranger inducted into the Trial of Hearts, a Hunger Games-esque competition. Being the winner might not be the reward that you think it is. Perhaps as a nature cleric, you've also been able to hide amongst the dense foliage long enough for your party to find you. Or shepherd druid were panthers that are among the few chosen to live in local villages as long as they obey Chikuna's call for the hunt. There are a lot more domains of dread, not as thoroughly outlined in the book, but be a storm sorcerer from the Morning Rail, an elemental powered train from Eberron swallowed by the mists. Be a circle of star druid from Clor, a living doomsday clock where the islands that make up the domain is destroyed every time a star is winked out of the sky at each start of the hour. A fathomless warlock from the domain of the Sea of Sorrows, a sea of terror that connects to other seas throughout the mists, or a mastermind rogue from the Vague Agency, a domain where the entirety is just a black and white detective agency. Find a domain that piques your interest and don't be afraid to use any of these subclasses if you get creative. Now there is a one to third level introductory adventure in the book called The House of Lament, a haunted mansion that can appear anywhere among the domains of dread. Perfect introductory adventure for your players. As the players are invited here, there's no need to be from the mansion specifically, so you can be an inquisitive rogue sent to investigate the 
hauntings, or you can be the one who invites the players there and performs the seances with them as the College of Spirits Bard. But now let's look at other ways to flavor your character. Dark gifts are supernatural abilities gifted by the dark powers or otherwise. It could be from a bargain, a curse, a sacrificial reward. Reinforce your unique origin with these gifts as follows. However, with dark gifts comes a price that if you roll a one on the dice, it gives you an affliction depending on the table provided. I won't go over every roll table item for every dark gift that has it, but I will add them here so you can pause it and read them if you want. With Gathered Whispers, you gain the Message Cantrip and a reaction that gives you a boost to AC with Howling Voices to defend you. The Living Shadow gift gives you a Mage Hand and a Shadow that allows you to attack with a Reach a certain number of times a day, but might give you a Bane or Bless-like effect if you ever roll a one. Mistwalker gives you the Misty Step spell and you can travel freely between domains as long as you know the name of the domain, though you can only stay in one location for a week before vitality is leached from you. Second Skin gives you the Alter Self spell, but can be uncontrollable when certain catalysts like the Full Moon. Symbiotic Being binds you with another entity, giving you the ability to expend hit dice to add to your saving throw rolls, including auto save on death saving throws and gaining one hit point. However, the Symbiote has its own agenda that might force your hand in doing so. Touch of Death gives you a Necrotic Unarmed Strike and Grappling Attack, ignoring resistances to Necrotic Damage. The Watcher's Gift gives you small spirit-like beings that act as second sets of eyes, aiding you in wisdom checks and keeping you from being blinded. You also have advantage on charisma checks to those who can also see your watchers, but you may easily be subjected to scrying spells, weirdly. Now if we explored some backgrounds, we might find some more relevant features for your character. Acolyte of the God of Mists of Ezra, of course, Charlatan for rebellious individuals in domain cities, or City Watch for the more stalwart, a noble or courtier from the many aristocratic and political domains, an entertainer from the Carnival or Cardacas, a failed merchant or far traveler of Astani, a Phalos from Tepest, a haunted one is especially relevant from any domain since this and the investigator background are from this book specifically, the latter great for the vague agency, a pirate from the Sea of Sorrows, a sage from the domain of Darkon, the Lordless One, but there should be quite a few good ones to pick from. Which brings us to some feats that might complete your character concept and could be actor or inspiring leader from the Carnival or Cardacos, alert for navigating the dangers of the mists, Artificer Initiate from the Homunculi Domain of Lamordia, Eldritch Adept, Magic Initiate, Shadow Touched, or Skulker that might come as more gifts from the Dark Powers or Navigating the Mists, Prodigy or Skill Expert in the same department, tapping into the echoes of other souls, or could be one specific type of telepathic or telekinetic from the alien domain of Blutzburg. But the great thing about the Domains of Dread is that it is ever-changing. Domains of Dread can be destroyed and created. And who knows, maybe even an incredibly dark act a player did in a previous campaign birthed a domain with them as the Dark Lord that you can now be a warlock of. But hopefully we cleared the mists on your Ravenloft character. You will have to let me know how it goes or what other character you've played in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. If you're looking to create characters in the Spelljammer or Eberron or other campaign settings, check out the rest of my playlist here. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off the tables.